What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be covering every single aspect you need to know when working with components in Laravel. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. Since Laravel 5.4, Laravel introduced a very popular pattern which are components and slots. When it comes to applications, you don't want to copy paste every single item you're going to use on your front end. With the usage of components, Laravel allows you to make reusable, independent and decoupled components within your Blaze templating engine. An example might be our header right here, named latest article. Do you want to copy paste the H1 with its classes every single time you need one? Or do you rather create a component that you could reuse? Well, my answer would be to create a component. I have created a new repository for this tutorial where I have already created a frontend of my Laravel application. I will link it in the description down below. Now within the repository, you will also find a readme, right here, where all steps have been written down that you need to perform in order to get the same output as I have. Besides that, I quickly want to show you the models that I have created so you can get a better understanding of what we're going to work with. So let's navigate to iTerm and let's run the PHP artisan model colon show and we're going to show the post model now keep in mind that you need to import the doctrine d ball so let's say yes all right now let's run our command one more time and right here we have a post model with a couple attributes id user id title excerpt and so on basic stuff with one relationship which is the tax model where it has a belongs to many relationship defined Let's quickly output the attributes and relationships of our tag by running php artisan model colon show. And what we're going to show is the tag, which has a default slug, name, and the timestamps. Besides that, it also has a relationship with a post table. Finally, I have also defined a post tag model, which we can output by saying php artisan model colon show named post tag. Right here, you can see that our post tag is a pivot table with two attributes. It has the post ID and it has the tag ID, where both of them are foreign keys. I'm not going to dive into the controller, factories or blades since it's basic stuff which you should be familiar with. We will be converting most of our HTML into components, which has to be done right inside of Blade. If we navigate back to Google Chrome and open our local host, you'll see a lot of pieces of code that we could transform into a component, since we can reuse it on different pages. And I want to start out with a simple component and make it more difficult step by step. And the easiest example will be the latest article H1 that we have right here. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code, open the resources folder, views folder, where we have an index.blade.php file. Right here, you'll see an H1. But if we open the contact.blade.php file, you'll see that we pretty much use the same H1, which is overkill to create it twice. If we create more pages, we do have to keep repeating them. Now, whenever you want to create a component, you need to use an artisan command for it. And well, guess the command. Let's navigate back to iTerm. It's the PHP artisan make me something called a component, followed with a component class name. In our case, we're going to call it header with a capital H. If we hit enter, you'll see that artisan prompted us with an info message saying that the component has been created successfully. Right now, two new directories have been created for us. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code and let's start at the top of our app directory. Let's open the app directory where you'll see a new directory created named view. And if we open that, you'll see a components directory with an header.php class inside of it. Next to our components header class, Larva also created a view template that you could use. Obviously, Views can be found inside the resource directory where it has created a components directory with the header.blade.php file inside of it. Keep in mind that there is no requirement of using the header components class that Laravel generated for us inside the app directory. So let me show you what I mean. If we copy, well, let's open the index.blade.php file. If we copy our h1, open our header.blade.php file and paste it right here inside of our header component. Then we need to navigate back to the index.blade.php file since we need to render our first component inside of an h1 tag. 
And whenever you want to replace, so let's say the h1 tag that we just deleted with our component tag, we need to start off with a less than sign, followed with a required x dash to tell Blade that we're going to call a component right here. Then we need to follow it up with a component class name in kebab case, which will be header. Once we have finished the class name, we need to close it off by adding a forward slash greater than sign. If we save it, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, you'll see that our latest article H1 is still visible with the use of components. Now you might wonder where the uses of the component class is, since our component works without doing anything inside of it. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code and let's open our header class. Now the namespace should make sense, the use statement as well, we have a default class called header, which is extending the component class. It has a default constructor, which you should be familiar with, followed with one method named render right at the bottom. Now the render method is an abstract method inside the components class, meaning that the render method needs to be implemented in any class that extends the component class. You're seeing that it's returning a simple view to the components folder, where it will search for a header.blade.php file. This class can be seen as a invocable controller class in Laravel. Whenever you want to access a service out of the service container and process data through your component, you'll be using the component class right here. Inside our header.blade.php file, you'll see that we added our h1, which is fine. But if you render it right now in other pages, we have a static latest article, which you actually don't want to have. So we need to make sure that we pass data right here. And the best example might even be Laravel its own example under official documentation. Now whenever you use an alert that pops up, you can obviously have different types of alerts. It can be a success message, info, warning, or even an error. By adding a constructor parameter to our view component class, Laravel knows which data is required. So let's do that. Let's navigate back to our header class and right under the class name, let's say that we want to define a new property and the property needs to be public, so Laravel knows that it needs to be available on all our component views. Now for our header, we're simply going to deal with a property called title. I recommend you to always use camel case for your component constructor argument. So if we make a camel case of it, it will be title of header. So something like this. Now this might be confusing, but you will get used to it since the constructor argument should be used in camel case while you reference to your property using kebab case. But for now, let's just undo it and stick to title. Now we obviously need to make sure that we use our property title, which can be done right inside of the constructor. So let's pass it in as a parameter. And then inside the constructor, we're going to say that this title, so our property is equal to the title that's being passed through. If we save it, navigate to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that we have run into our first error message since we've got a dependency error. The header class component accepts one required parameter right here called title. So let's navigate back to the index.blade.php file since we need to pass in an argument inside our header component right here. Now this can be done by setting a new property type of title equal to a string of the title that you want to pass in. Now in our case, let's say latest article. We're not done yet because we can render a component right now, but the data will be static from a component class. Whenever you want to output the argument inside the header class, you simply need to echo it as a variable inside the header component. So let's open the header.blade.php file and let's replace latest article with a variable named title, which is coming from the title argument that we're passing in right here. So let me save both files, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh the page, and as you could see, latest article has been printed out. So let's put it in use one more time to show you how we could save ourselves some lines of code. If we click on contact in the top right corner, you'll see that we have been redirected to the contact page where we have our H1 named contact. So let's replace this with the header component that we have created. Now we need to navigate to the contact.blade.php file, remove our h1, call our component by saying x-header, pass in a title of contact, and finally we need to close it off. 
If we save it, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh the page, you'll see that contact has still been printed out. Now, up until now, we simply worked with passing static data to our component. So let's see how this works whenever you want to pass in PHP expressions and variables into your component. We first need to make sure that we create our component class first. So let's do that. Let's navigate back to the CLI and let's create a new component. But we're going to do it a little bit more different. Since we don't want to store all our components inside the components directory of either our view or component class, we rather want to split it up into different directories. So everything related to the block into a block subdirectory, while everything related to forms inside a form subdirectory. Luckily, Larva allows you to do that through the artisan command line. We simply need to perform the php artisan make colon component command. Then we need to define the subdirectory. So let's name it block forward slash followed with the class name. So let's say block item. If we hit enter, you'll see that we have been prompted with the message saying that our component has been created successfully. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. And right inside of our view components directory, you'll see that a block subdirectory has been created with a block item class inside of it. Now inside our block item class, we're going to define one property, which is once again public. And we're going to define a singular post right here. Since we're not going to add the loop of our post inside our component, but only the styling of one single post. Let's set the property inside the constructor as well. So let's say one single post property post is equal to that specific post. Now let's save it. Let's navigate back to the index.blade.php file. And let's copy everything that we have to find inside our for each loop right here. So let's copy it. Let's scroll down. Let's remove it because we will be refactoring it in a bit as well. Let's open the block directory inside our components directory where we have a block item blade file. Let's paste what we just copied. Let's save it. And let's navigate back to the index.blade.php file since we need to call our component. This can be done in the same exact way. Less than x dash. And since we're using a nested directory structure, we do have to use the dot character to indicate the subdirectory first. So let's say block for our subdirectory dot block dash item and let's close it off whenever you want to pass in php variables to your component you need to pretty much use the same syntax as we did before with our title but we do need to add a colon character in front of it as a prefix so let's say colon post is equal to a string and inside our string we need to pass in dollar sign post so variable post and don't forget to add the dollar sign right here since we're going to pass in a variable and not a simple string of posts. Let's save it. Let's navigate back to Google Chrome and let's click on components in the top left corner. And as you could see, our posts are still visible and we made our index.blade.php file a lot shorter by using components. Now we could even place components inside components. If we navigate to our block item component, you'll see that we're printing out the tags right here in a for each loop. Personally, I would create a component for a tag item as well. So let's create a new component by saying PHP artisan make me a new component inside a subdirectory called tag and name it tag item. Let's hit enter. Let's navigate back to our class component. All right, let's define a new property. It's going to be singular as well, so public tag let's add it inside the constructor by saying this tag is equal to dollar sign tag then we need to make sure that we navigate back to our block item copy our entire list item so not the for each loop or the unordered list open our tags directory inside our views tag item and paste it right here now let's make sure that we call our component instead of our list item so let's say tag directory dot tag dash item we're gonna pass in a single tag so colon tag is equal to and we're not gonna pass in the tag that we have right here but we're simply gonna pass in the tag name because we're printing that out here as well so what we could do is basically saying well get me the tag name then inside our tag item component we could replace our tag name here with a simple tag that we're passing in through our component, which looks a little bit cleaner in my opinion. 
Let's save it, navigate back, refresh it, and as you can see, our tags are still visible. When it comes to components, you'll be hearing the term slots quite a lot in the same sentence. There might be a case, and actually a lot of cases, where you do want to add additional data to your component. Now Laravel provides a slot variable where you could use it for. Let's look at how it works. Let's start off by navigating back to our index.blade.php file, where we have a small paragraph right here, right under our header component. The syntax of a component will be a little bit different when working with slots, since you do need to have an opening and closing tag. So let's refactor our header component a little bit. Let's close off our opening tag by saying X header, and don't forget the forward slash, and let's place our paragraph right inside of our header component. In order to make use of slot variables, you have to navigate to the component, so let's say our header.blade.php, and add a slot where you would like to output it. Now we obviously want to keep the same structure, so we want to output our paragraph right under our h1, and this can be done by calling the slot variable, which is a variable created by Blade. Now the slot variable that we're using right here will be replaced with everything that's placed between the opening header component tag and closing tag. If we save it, navigate to Google Chrome, refresh the page, and right here, you'll see that our paragraph is still visible. Now the interesting part comes here. If we navigate back to the forward slash contact endpoint, you'll see that our fill in the form to get in touch is still visible because it's static. Now let's navigate back to the contact.blade.php file. If we copy our paragraph and remove it, save it, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, you'll see that it's obviously deleted. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code and refactor our header component, all right. If we save it and navigate back as well, refresh it, you'll see that our page is still visible and even though our paragraph has been deleted, we're not getting an error message. And this is happening because the variable slot is optional. So it's up to you whether you want to add it or not. If we paste what we just copied, navigate back, refresh it, you'll see that fill in the form to get in touch because Blade recognizes that a slot has been added. All right, now let's talk about component attributes. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code and let's actually close off all tabs. And let's open our header.blade.php file. Right here, you're seeing that we're passing in the class directly inside our h1 tag. Now it's not required to add them right here, since you could add them inside the component slot here as well. Personally, I don't recommend adding the entire class that we have. So this entire class inside the component tag, because your component will get clustered and I'm a fan of components because you could keep it compact. But it does allow you to merge multiple class attributes together. So let's say that we want to keep our current styling of classes that we got, but we simply want to add an additional one. So let's navigate back to the index.blade.php file, and let's add a class attribute inside our header component. So let's say class is equal to a string. For demonstration purposes, let's just pass in a class of padding left, which is equal to 10. Now, if we save it and navigate back, go to our forward slash endpoint, you'll see that our padding 10 has not been added yet. Now, in order to make it work, we need to navigate back to Visual Studio Code, go to our header.blade.php file, and right after our class, add a variable called attributes. And the attributes variable can be seen as a big bag of attributes that have been added to your component. What we need to do is simply outputting this variable. So if we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see once again that our styling hasn't been added right here. The reason why is because we already got a class attribute defined inside of our h1. If we remove our entire class, save it, refresh the browser, you'll see that the padding 10 has been added, but obviously the other styling has been removed. So something is still going wrong right here. Blade basically detects that it already has a class attribute and you can't have two inside a tag. So what Blade allows us to do is merging both attributes. This can be done by chaining the merge method right to our attributes variable. Now our merge attribute accepts an array with a key value pair. The key will be the class, so basically the attribute, 
while the value will be all classes that we have. So let's copy what we have inside our class and paste it as a value. Now we don't need the class attribute in our H1, so let's completely delete it. All right, if we save it, navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that the default styling has been implemented that we added right here inside our H1, but it has also added the additional styling that we have passed through as an attribute inside our index.blade.php file, right here. If we remove our class right here of styling, navigate back, refresh it, and you'll see that it still accepts the styling that we have inside the header.blade.php file. Now, a fun thing that you need to remember is that it also runs without errors. We just deleted our class, but the attributes variable didn't give us an error. So it still makes sure that even though you haven't added a class attribute inside your component, it still works. I got to say that using this on classes is the most easiest example. But this can also be done for input fields, buttons, and so on. So let's test it out inside the button that we have on our contact form right here, the submit message button. Let's first create a new component inside our forms. So let's say PHP artisan make me a component inside a form subdirectory named primary button. If we hit enter, you'll see that our component has been created successfully. So let's now get back to Visual Studio Code, open the contact.blade.php file, and let's copy our button that we have paste it inside the form subdirectory where we have our primary button file. We're going to change up a couple things right here. We're first going to replace our submit message string with a slot. And we don't always want our primary button to be aligned in the middle, so the margin auto and the block. So what we could do is basically merging it again by saying attributes, merge. We're going to pass in an array of class with a value of all classes that we have right here and we don't need the class attribute anymore. We're gonna remove the MX auto and the block styling, which we will be adding later on inside our primary button component. Now buttons needs to be submitted. And since we're using a key value pair inside our merge class, we could provide a default submit type on our form as well. So let me actually align it first. Let's go on the line below right here and here as well. All right, let's add a new key value pair where the key is type and the value is equal to submit. Now keep in mind that the type on buttons doesn't work in the same way as class attributes. The type attribute will not be merged, but it will be overridden once you pass a different type of value inside your primary button attribute. Now let's fix it inside our contact.blade.php file. Let's remove the button that we have. And let's call our component by saying x forms primary dash button and let's close it off as well then we need to make sure that we pass in a slot of submit message so pretty much what we had before we need to make sure that we add the two classes that we removed from our button tag which will only work on this particular button so let's say that we want to pass in a class of mx auto and block if we save it navigate back to google chrome Refresh it, you'll see that our button is still visible right here, but let's inspect the page for a minute. This might be difficult for you to read, but you'll see that the type is equal to submit, which is the second key value pair that we added inside our merge method. Now let's overwrite the submit type to let's say button. Let's navigate back. Let's say that the type is equal to button. If we save it, navigate back to the browser and refresh it, You'll see that it hasn't added an extra type, but it simply has overridden the type submit to the type button. Now there are a couple other methods available that you could implement on your attribute variables, which we won't cover, but I will add the documentation in the description down below. The core idea behind it and the usage is exactly the same as we've done right here. So we will be repeating ourselves if we cover them all. Now let's close off our inspector. And if we navigate back to our contact.blade.php form, you'll see that we could definitely create a component for our input fields right here, since we're using three input fields right below each other. If we even take a better look, you can see that they all use a type and a name, which both are actually required. So whenever you need to add a property that all input fields should be implemented, 
you should make use of props. And before we make use of it, let's quickly create a new component. But right now, I do want to show you a different way of creating components, which is manually inside the components directory, right here. So inside our form subdirectory, let's create a new file and let's name it text-input.blade.php. Now let's navigate back to our contact form. Let's copy the first input field and let's paste it in our text input blade. Let's align it. All right. And this is pretty interesting if you don't need the component class, but simply needs a component view. Now let me actually show you the output so you know that it works as well. So let's call it by saying xforms.text-input, save it, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh the page, and as you can see, it has added our component right here, even though we didn't use the make component command through the CLI. I can't help it to change the class again, and I know that we've done that before as well, but let's quickly remove the height and width from the text input field. Right here. So let's copy the width full and the height. Go right in front of our class attribute and call our attributes variable. Merge. And what we're going to merge is the class, single quotes, and let's copy or move our entire styling inside of it. Now we don't need the class that we have defined right here. Now this looks fine. And inside our context form, let's add the class of what we just copied. Now the next step is declaring the properties. And this isn't an attribute that you could pass in as property or whatever. We need to define a props function that accepts an array. And this needs to be done right inside of your component, right above our input field and not below. So let's add a couple enters right here. All right. Now the reason why it should be above our input field is because our values will be used inside of our input field. So we can declare an input field and then the props. Whenever you want to define props, you need to start off with the at sign followed with the keyword props. It's a function, which means that we need to add parentheses. Now inside the parentheses, we're going to pass in an array and hit enter. Where we need to define keys that are required for the input field. Now in our case, let's say the type, let's say the name, and let's say the placeholder. Now the props function will basically create three new variables for us, type, name, and placeholder, which we could replace with a value of text, name, and the placeholder value. So let's start at the top. Let's replace text with dollar sign type. We have our name, which should be replaced with our variable name, and then our placeholder which should be placeholder. Now, keep in mind that it also allows you to add a default. Most input fields have a type of text, right? You obviously have a lot of emails and phone number input fields as well, but it's a good habit to pass in a default for those. This can be done by making a key value pair inside your props function, and in our case, it will be the type. So let's add a key value pair, where we will add a default of text. Right now, we need to make sure that we pass these inside our component tag of the contact.blade.php file. And let me actually align it on the line below. All right. Now, actually, before we add them, let's save them and navigate to the browser, and let's see what error message will be prompted to us by Laravel. You'll see that we have been prompted with an undefined variable dollar sign name. So we do need to set these when calling our text input fields. So let's do that. Let's say that the name is equal to name and let's add a placeholder of name dot 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 keep in mind that the type is equal to text so we don't need to add it right here if we save it navigate back to google chrome refresh it you'll see that our input field is still visible with a placeholder of name and there's no need to pass in a type since the name uses the default type of text but we do need to add it inside our second input field, which is our email. So we need to overwrite our default type. So what we could do is basically copy what we have above, place it down below. Let me align it. Now the name will be email. Keep in mind that we have a type of email as well. So let's add that. And the placeholder will be email. Now we can remove our input tag, save it, refresh the browser, and right here, you'll see our email input field. If we inspect it, 
you'll see that the type is equal to email, which has overridden the default type of text that has been added in our first input field, where you'll see type is equal to text. Now let's replace our last input field real quick, which can be done with the first one. The name will be equal to subject. We once again do not need to pass in a type because it's text and the placeholder of subject. If we save it and navigate back, if we refresh it, you'll see that our subject is still visible. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is inlining components. At the moment, you'll see that we only have our text area left right here. And inlining components isn't something that I usually do, but I do have to show you how it works. Now, whenever you want to work with very small components, you don't want to create a component class or even a component view template for it. Therefore, Artisan allows you to add an inline flag when creating your component. So let's navigate back to the CLI and let's perform the php artisan make colon component command inside a form subdirectory forward slash text area. We're not done yet because we need to add a flag of double dash inline. Now, the double dash inline flag doesn't create a component view for you, but it does create a component class at the top. Inside our forms directory, we have our text area right here. Now the render method isn't returning a view, but simply a div. Now the syntax might look weird to you, but the text area or the content needs to be placed inside the blade directives instead of the div right here. So if you paste it, align it and blade as well. So let's save it. And then instead of the text area inside our contact.blade.php file, we could simply add our components tag of our text area. So let's say x forms dot text area. Even though our form subdirectory hasn't been created in our view, we did add it inside our make column component command. So we do need to add our forms subdirectory right here. If we save it and navigate to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that our text area is still visible. Now this was it for this crash course where we dived into the most important topics related to components in Laravel. I'll try to build the entire application out of components and I'll add it in the GitHub repository down below. If you want an exercise, do it too, so you could compare how you did it versus me. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.